Kellen Moore is about to make life easier for everyone in the Philadelphia Eagles offense. Today, we're gonna to take a look under the hood of Moore's scheme to see some of the core principles that he builds around. There are some common themes that show up over and over in Moore's offenses. In particular, his use of shifts, motions, bunches, and stacks makes it easier to identify and dictate coverage and also allows his weapons to get open with less work involved. Let's take a look at this play from 2022 against the Lions. The Cowboys come out in a condensed formation. Right now, they're in a dirty bunch. It's similar to standard bunch formation, except the running back in the backfield is involved in the bunch. Because of the alignments, they can still run the majority of their bunch concepts. The defense needs to be aware of the dirty bunch and communicate how they will handle the look. But the Cowboys motion CD Lamb to the other side of the formation into a standard bunch. So the Cowboys came out in a dirty bunch on one side and then motion to a bunch on the other side, forcing the defense to re-communicate again. Not only that, now the Cowboys have a nub tight end with a running back on the back side of the bunch. Nub formations stress the defense in their own right, but we'll get to that later. Defenses have a variety of ways to combat bunch formations. One of the most common is using a box check. You can see the defenders on the bunch side communicating the box check. You can also see the defenders on the weak side communicating how they want to handle the nub alignment. I've covered box checks before, but essentially, you have a defender matching the first threat to the flat, another matching the first threat short and inside, and two deep defenders matching the first deep out and deep and breaking routes. The Cowboys are running a variation of a mesh concept, which is one of Kellen Moore's staple concepts. With the Cowboys releasing two receivers short and inside, the linebacker lets the underneath drag route go and matches the sit route. It also helps occupy the safety playing the first deep and inside route. Michael Gallup is running a post route, but his initial release helps hold the corner for a second. Instead of releasing the tight end to run the drag route immediately, they have the running back release from the backfield to the opposite flat right away, which moves the flat defender. With every defender involved in the box check now occupied, the tight end running the delayed drag route comes wide open. Dallas Goddard is one of the best tight ends after the catch. This is a concept that I can easily envision him scoring on. Not only that, Dak probably could have hit Gallup running the post route, considering the sit route distracted the safety. Let's take a look at another play. But before we do that, I want to mention that this video isn't going to be a discussion about Moore's previous success and failures and tendencies. If you want more information about that, I wrote an article taking a deep dive into Moore's history that I've linked in the description. There's some great information in there, with some stuff that Eagles fans will be excited about, such as his run and screen rates on third and long. On this play from 2021, the Cowboys are again in a dirty bunch formation. Again, you can see the defense communicating a box check. This time, instead of trying to manipulate and target the underneath coverage, the Cowboys are going to manipulate the deep defenders. They have the tight end release vertical off the line so that the deep defenders are distracted while they wait for his route to declare. Amari Cooper slow releases off the line and attacks the inside shoulder of the safety. By the time the safety realizes what is happening, Cooper is running wide open inside of him. On the bottom of the screen, the two detached receivers are running rub routes to give Dak an option against man coverage. Every team has preferences on how they handle bunch formations. These two examples showed how Kellen Moore used bunch sets to dictate coverage while running route combination to exploit those same exact coverages. Some teams prefer to play man coverage more often to bunch formations. There's different ways teams will do that, but the tight alignments often create confusion, traffic, and free releases for receivers and tight ends like we see here. Kellen Moore's offenses consistently motion into and out of standard and dirty bunch formations, forcing the defense to constantly communicate from one side of the field to the other. It's one of his favorite ways to attack defenses in the red zone and in man-heavy third down situations. In addition to bunch formations, Kellen Moore deploys a lot of stack alignments as well. Like with bunch formations, it often allows the offense to dictate coverages as teams will only have a handful of ways they handle stack alignments. In addition to that, it makes it easier for receiving threats to get free releases off the line of scrimmage and play with leverage. Take a look at this play with CD Lamb. The stack formation only allows one defender to press at the line of scrimmage, unless they want to put themselves at a high risk of getting their defenders picked. The tight alignment of the stack also forces the corner guarding CD to play with outside leverage, and his release off the line further exacerbates the issue. It doesn't take a superstar receiver to run an in-breaking route against a defender playing off coverage with outside leverage. I see Devontae Smith benefiting the most from this new offense. He's one of the best route runners in the league, and while he does have a great release package when pressed on the line of scrimmage, his lack of size and 
and strength shows up occasionally when defenders are able to get their hands on him. And to be honest, it doesn't even happen that often. But just making life easier for him, where he doesn't have to work so damn hard on the majority of his releases, is really going to help take his game to the next level. I fully expect AJ to take on the X receiver role, where he'll be the one isolated more often and have to beat press coverage while Devontae is getting easier releases. But he's built better for that role. And both guys are going to get schemed up easier releases regardless. It's just how Moore's offenses are designed, but AJ will likely be isolated more often than Devontae. In addition to his constant use of bunch and stack alignments, Kellen Moore also uses a combination of personnel and alignment to create advantageous matchups and easier coverage identifications. On this play, the Chargers come out in 12 personnel while using a tight end trips formation. The Ravens match with base personnel, and the spread formation forces an edge defender to declare that he's going to be dropping into coverage. It's clearly not going to be man coverage, with the edge aligned on Keenan Allen. The Chargers motion tight end Gerald Everett across the formation to a wide alignment to create a 2x2 two two look. Keep in mind, base personnel groupings usually don't have as exotic of coverage designs due to having less mobile guys on the field. And due to the leverage and depth of the defenders, as well as the alignment of the safeties, it looks like a split field coverage like cover 6. One of Moore's favorite ways to attack split field coverages is to manipulate the drop of the middle linebacker and throw into the area he vacated. The Chargers do that here by having the running back release to the flat, forcing the linebacker to bump towards the three receiver side of the field. On the backside, they have Keenan Allen running a slant against an edge defender that has flat responsibility to the other side. Personnel, alignment, and route combinations gives the quarterback an easy catch and throw opportunity. Again, we see the same concept show up in 2022. Here, the Eagles are in quarters coverage and the Cowboys hop the back before the snap. Then, they immediately release a back fast to the flat, forcing the middle linebacker to push towards that side of the field, with CeeDee Lamb running a slant against a defender with flat responsibility. Another easy pitch and catch. With how much split field coverage the Eagles saw this year, and how many times opposing offenses have used this exact concept against them the past two seasons, it blows my mind that Sirianni didn't implement this idea in his offense. Either way, we'll see it show up with Kellen Moore. But let's get back to personnel usage again. Moore loves to come out in 12 personnel, and then shift to empty formations. Once once again, they're trying to force defenses into base personnel, dictate coverage by going into empty, and gain advantageous matchups against bigger, slower defenders with alignment. They're not usually looking for big hitting plays in these scenarios. Often it's just to give the quarterback simple reads with easy throws that gets the ball out of their hands quickly. It's precisely what the Arizona Cardinals did against the Eagles in week 17 this year. Having said that, they will try to design explosive plays to complement their quick hitters out of these looks. Shifting gears, I mentioned earlier that nub formations stress defense in their own right. Let's take a look at how Kellen Moore uses that to the offense's advantage. I'm not really focusing on the run game here, but it should be mentioned that nub formations often stress the defense because it forces the corner to get involved in the run fits. On top of that, it's an easy way to isolate linebackers against running backs in the passing game. One of the most common ways that teams will handle trips formations is by having the backside corner man the solo receiver or tight end with the will backer taking the running back. With a solid receiving threat, choice routes and Texas routes become deadly options. Options. And with a little creativity, explosives can be generated without much risk involved. I really like this play against the Jets. Even though Justin Herbert doesn't get the ball out on time, you can see how the nub alignment acts like a stack alignment for the running back. The tight end is basically shielding the linebacker for Eckler to get a free release. Herbert eventually gets to Eckler, but you can see just how easy it can be to get running backs wide open in nub formations. Again, why in the f didn't Nick Sirianni scheme these looks up for DeAndre Swift? Anyway, even though Moore's offenses didn't target backs as much as I would have thought, you will get creative trying to scheme his weapons open looks. Here, he gets into an empty formation with Austin Eckler as the number one receiver to help easily identify man coverage, motions him into a stack alignment, and then uses him as the primary target in the mesh concept. Overall, Kellen Moore's offenses helps to give the quarterback easy reads and quick access throws. Receivers don't have to work as hard to get open due to the nature of formations, alignments, and route combinations, and he often dictates how a defense has to play. This is really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Kellen's offenses. I haven't even touched on his play action and bootleg game, four strong formations, rushing attack, RPOs, orbit motions, trick plays, and play sequencing. This really could have turned into an hour-long video, but I'll break up the topics into chunks that we can enjoy over the long offseason. For now, just know that Kellen Moore is going to make life easier for everyone.